Welcome, welcome everybody to a new human experience podcast. And today is May the 20th, 2021. The topic for this evening is knowing. So all within the month of May, the, the topic is really um, to know ourselves, to, to really get to know ourselves. And we, um, the first, for first week, we kind of talked about you know, ways that we can um, start to get to know ourselves better because a lot of the times we um, react from things that we, we learned from our parents and all that. However, those things that we have adopted from, from society or from members of family may not be truly ours, may not be what is innately um, true to ourselves, not, not really authentic for ourselves. So one of the ways I introduced in the first week to knowing ourselves is to really observe, to observe how we, um, our inner dialogue, how we react, how our emotions that comes up when things happen during our lives. So that's one way of really getting to know ourselves. So to just observe ourselves is really the best way to know ourselves. And then last week, if we talked about identity in, and more specifically is that when we let go of our identities, the ways that we have somehow identified with um, because every identity is really kind of like a box. So we kind of boxed in. And when we, um, so the, the way our um, mind and brain works is that because there's so many information around us, so much information, and we can only focus on a handful a very small um, percentage of, of the information that is available. So the way we um, sort and, and, and pick the information that we focus on is really depending on all our different identifications. So our identifications actually serves as a, a filter a lens through which we let in information or, or, and also screen out information. So if we want to know more of ourselves, then we need to let go of those different identities. For example, we identify ourselves as a mother or a, uh, a lover or a um, good person or a happy person or a disappointed person or a sad person. So all those things, when we have that identity, we only allow in information that supports these identifications, which means that we are in actual fact cutting so much of ourselves off that we sometimes don't even notice. So letting go of our own identifications is another way of getting to know the real authentic you that's being buried underneath all of those conditionings and identifications which we may have adopted when we were at a very young age and we just didn't know better. So this week I want to talk more about knowing. So getting to know ourselves. So it's it's kind of more about the the, the more in a way, it's more of the mystical side of things. It's because we are eternal and infinite beings. And theoretically, we have access. We can know anything. We, it like all is one. Everything is just one. And when we um, revert back to that one, just one being, then we actually have potentially access to any kind of information. We can know anything we want, past, present, and future. 
we can know anything we want from this location or anywhere else in the galaxy or the universe. So in a way, there is no end to our knowing. So how do we get back to that state that we can actually reclaim more of our knowing and be able to um, have access to more of this knowing? Um, there is, when we come here, we actually, um, we take on the, the, the veil of forgetfulness so that we can have an, uh, each lifetime would be an authentic experience of whatever it is our soul has created for us to experience and guide us to experience and also to learn through those experiences in each lifetime. And when we, when we um, come back to in, in another lifetime, we, for, we actually forget all the things that we, um, the people, the things and the locations that we, we have been to. So this is something that is kind of, we, we, we do that. However, as we um, grow in our soul, it's actually becoming more, it's be becoming easier for us to pull, pull away or start to move away these veils of forgetfulness and start to recover, especially now in this day and age, because we are we actually at the, well, some people call it the time of harvest, meaning that we are um, changing or transitioning from third dimension to a higher dimension. So that, that means it's an end of a, um, um, the experience of third density. And third density is the only density that actually has the, the veil of forgetfulness as an aid for us to be able to learn and get to, um, and to the place where we graduate from third density. So now more than ever is actually the best time that we would be able to part the veil of forgetfulness and be able to reclaim more of the knowing, the infinite knowingness that we have. And one of the, the ways that I have been taught to, um, to do that and um, is really something called energy tracking. There is, of course, many names. Um, some people may call it um, remote viewing. That is, and, and remote viewing is actually just a very um, specific protocol, specific way to track energy. However, there are many ways of tracking energy. And when I say tracking energy, I just mean that you, you, you can just um, look at something, for example, a picture of someone or some object and be able to follow the energy that's been captured in that um, picture and be able to find out much more information, more than what is um, being, uh, more than what your eyes can see in that picture. You can actually, from the picture of a person, you be able to um, get information about the, the, the health of that person perhaps, and also um, be able to find out where that person is um, per, is right now currently located or, or all those. So these are all just extra bits of information that is um, available just from a picture. So that's what I mean by energy tracking is that um, as long as you have an object, something like a picture, or an, um, um, something that you can hold in your hands, as long as you have some way of uniquely identifying 
um, an event or, or an object or something that you want to get more information about, once you have that narrowed um, subject that you want to, to get more information about, your mind can actually start to receive information about that particular um, subject. So it sounds like it's very, it's very mystical. However, it's actually something that is very natural and innate. The only reason why we, we um, don't normally have that kind of access is because of all the, the, the um, identities um, and also how our, our mind is structured so that anything that is not um, essential for our well-being in that moment let's say if you're hungry then you would notice all of the food places or food items that's available to you but when you're not hungry when you're absolutely full you don't you don't notice those things you will start to notice other things like other things like could be um, um, nature butterfly all these other things whatever it is that's that um, whole that gives you joy that, that draws your attention. That's really how our brain works. However, our brain actually has a lot more capabilities. We can actually, um, when we start to, to develop that, that um, skill, that muscle, because this is really a, a, a skill, like a muscle that we need to, that we can actually start to do more of, exercise more of, and we would be able to get that. So this is really what I want to talk about today in, in this um, episode is really energy tracking. And I, I don't want to, um, actually, what I want to do is to really introduce energy tracking as something that is, that anyone can do. It's something that is innate. The only reason why we don't do it right now is simply because we we weren't um, we weren't taught we weren't um, it, it was not something that we are familiar with because most of the time we tend to believe that we only get information just by reading by um, um, getting that information from somewhere else, whether it is on the news or um, s from someone else um, telling us about it, all those different ways. We, we, only, we, we are so used to um, just getting information from all these more um, limited ways we forgot that we can actually get information from just allowing and inviting those information in just by our, our the, the 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 power of our mind so i just want to introduce a very simple procedure of starting to reactivate that um that ability and skill and, and if you so choose that you, the more you practice this, the more you play with this, the, the, the easier this will become. However, it, it all just starts with a few simple steps. So the first thing in the most basic way of tracking energy, the first thing is really just to relax meaning to relax your body and make sure that you're not in a very stressed um, situation. Once you get good at it, you, these will not be as important. You would be able to even track information when you are you know, in, in the middle of something or when you are um, you know, less relaxed. But when you are beginning, just make sure that your body is relaxed and also clear your mind that meaning that um, make sure that you your mind does not have anything pressing that it needs to do so make make sure that you um, you're not 
give yourself a good 15, 20 minutes that you can just be in a, um, a place where you can relax your body and clear your mind. So um, waiting for a traffic light to change may not be the best time and place to practice this. Whereas when you are maybe walking in nature or maybe just um, having a cup of tea in your own, in your own uh, living room, that may be a good time to do something like this. It's just when you relax, uh, you can kind of just clear out your mind. And the third um, step is to really let go of any attachments to results. So um, especially when you when you first start is to, like just play, just play. Don't don't be attached to whether you get anything or not. Um, a lot of times the first couple of sessions, um, you may get nothing at all. However, um, it's it's not because it's not um, effective. It's just that you you are not um, your mind is not tuned to pay attention to the information that's coming at you. So just let go of any attachments to any kind of results or any particular way that the results comes in. So just let go of any attachments to how it may or may not look like what you may or may not receive. And then the fourth step is to focus on um, the object. Focus on what it is that you want to track. If you want to get information about a person, then um, either have a photo of that person on your phone or actually a photograph, or maybe just something um, or just a photo um, in a magazine. Just have something that will um, visually give you and give you a cue of what it is, the object that you want to track. Or if you want to track an event, let's say you want to track um, January 1st, 2021, you want to track something. So have a date in mind or, or a specific event. Um, or even if you, it does not have to be a specific date, it can be a specific location. It could be um, a location like a, a certain intersection uh, of in, in of streets around your neighborhood. You want to find out what happened in that location, let's say 9 a.m. or 9 p.m. at night. So location, or maybe you want to you know, have the location as something like um, Atlantis or Lemuria. So, so those are different location as well. You can also track a, let's say a sensation in your body. It could be a pain or it could be a, a tingling sensation. So anything, just as long as you have a focal point. That, so pick a focal point of what you want to track. And then once you have all of these first four steps down pretty well, then all you do is simply let go of your mind and just allow the information to come in. And that basically is um, all that is. Just allow information to come in. It's, it's, it's actually quite simple. Um, and I suggest that you um, practice on little things. I remember when I first practiced, what I, what I did was I would, um, let's say a phone rings. So I would guess, or I would just um, quickly track. So who do I think this would be that's calling me? And, um, because it's something that is fairly easy to, um, to find out the results. Because all I have to do is, you know, think of who, who I think it may be, my, my, the, the first um, name of the person that pops in my mind. Or if it's a company, then I would get that information. And then all I have to do to find out whether it's true or not is just to answer the phone. 
So something simple like that, that you can get a confirmation fairly easily. And the things, other things that you can use to, to start to experiment and play with this, this uh, energy tracking um, at first is something like um, a delivery. Sometimes if I, I remember recently, I ordered some books from, um, from chapters from a bookstore in, in, um, in Toronto. So I would just guess, okay, so when do I think this book is going to come? So I would just, you know, take out the calendar and say, okay, this, um, this is a day that I think it will come. Um, sometimes the, the, when I, or when I, um, after I ordered the, 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 the company would just tell, tell me, well, we estimate that it's between this date and, and this date, like usually within five to seven dates at most, the, the book will arrive. And then I would just, you know, tune in. Is that correct? Um, is Sometimes I would sense that it may be sooner. Sometimes I may sense that it is later. But these are, because these are um, things that you can get the answer to fairly easily, you can get confirmation. Either you get it or you don't fairly easily. And it's it's also um, because of nature of the, the, the subject that I'm, uh, of the energy that I'm trying to track, it's rather neutral. So it's fairly easy to get success when I try to do that. Um, and then when you when you've done this for a while and you you seem to be getting um, favorable results, then you can move on to things that are more advanced. It could be that oh, okay, you can say okay, I'll I'll tune into my daughter or my um, or, or some other friend and just see how do they feel today are they in a good mood bad mood and that kind of things and and then once i get a sense of what's going on in their environment i can either call them right away or call them later um, when they are available to find out uh, to get an in a confirmation whether it's, it's it's what i got that it is or not so these are ways that you can start to do that and then if you are trying to track some um, energy, let's say a sensation in your body, you, you um, are seeing, okay, there is a pain in your body and you really want to find out where does it originate? Because sometimes the, the place where you feel the sensation is not the place of origin, then that's when you can start to track. So uh, you can track it um, by just allowing that information to come to you. Let's say if I, my, I feel um, a pain in my shoulder and then when I start to tune into it, I, I get um, attracted to, let's say my kidney, something like that. So then you, it's something that you can confirm fairly easily actually if you um, let's say start to mass to to gently massage your kidney for example and you start to feel a, a a shift in your pain then you know that oh okay that's kind of a confirmation and then other times you may need to get someone else to confirm it for you so these are other ways that you can um, practice your the skill of energy tracking and the more you practice the um, and the more complicated you start to you, you kind of grow into it start with simple then when you are pretty good at simple you go to you you tick it up a notch and you keep going until you get to the point where you actually um it would be able to get more complicated things and um, it does help it, it always um, when you're learning it helps to confirm your tracking so um, I'm kind of fortunate in that I 
I have um, I know people who are who who are sensitive to energy. So if I if I want to practice something, then I can always always um, you know ask someone else to check it for me to to see if we get the same thing or whether or at the very least I'm in the ballpark of um, being able to confirm what it is that I get. So the more you you practice this. Um, allow this information to come to you, then the, the, the stronger you, this muscle and this skill would become. And I also actually want to talk about some of the th ways that you can, um, or I should say there, the, there are several th things that I know of that would be able to derail your ability of, of being able to track energy and also some ways that can assist you in um, allowing this the skill to actually become more powerful. The first way that um, that can really derail your ability is fear. Um, if you have fear in terms of what it is, the information that you're seeking, Let's say if you if you are tracking somebody's um, um, let's say illness and you you don't want to give people bad news, then this fear, this 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 um, preference of not finding out things that are, are bad and giving bad news to people, this would be something that is going to um, derail your ability to become accurate. So what can you do about this is to really recognize that you have this, this fear, fear of giving bad news or fear of finding out things that you uh, are not ready to, um, to, to know yet. So definitely um, fear, do fear processing, let go of any attachments to what it is that you find. And if you, you really have trouble, letting go of the fear, then I would suggest to pick another, um, pick another object, pick, pick something else to something else that's more neutral um, to, to practice first. So fear processing and letting go of attachments. Um, yeah, those those are those two are the the big ones. Is attachments to the results. If you if if you have attachments that you know, your ego is saying, I I have to, I want to, I need to get information, then that kind of attachments is is actually um, actually would derail you more than assist you. If you just um, use practice this without any attachments. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, then um, you then don't, then you don't letting go of this. And so, so that's letting go of the attachments is really um, one of the best way to, to make sure that you don't derail yourself. You don't make it hard for yourself to, to screen out the information. And then um, the the fourth one uh, is is it's not so much a way to derail. The this one is actually um, ways that you can increase the your ability to track information, <clears throat> and that really is um, love and acceptance. So this is really the, the, the opposite of fear and attachments is love and acceptance. So the more you, you love yourself, the more you love playing with this idea, the more you accept that this is a process and that some things you, um, it may take you a long time to get information and that sometimes you may, you may get it wrong and that's okay. Don't um, don't require yourself to be right all the time. I remember when I first practiced this, 
my ego was like, um, cause it's when I first practiced this, it's, it's more of, it's, it's like 50, 50, a hit miss all the time. And my ego would say, see, you can't trust yourself. You can't do it. So, so when you have this voice in your head that tells you, you, you know, you can't trust yourself, you can't do it, then this is, um, not going to help. So that's why love and acceptance, love, love this as a game. This is really a, um, that's the only way to learn anything is to fail. And even if you fail, you get it back up and you still keep at it. You still keep trying just for the love of it. Love of learning something new love of developing this new skill and also love of yourself as well because this um this this judging yourself is really not very loving at all and when you love and accept yourself then it actually um increase your ability to be able to get more information and more accurate information and and actually the more I um, learn about knowing getting information it's like um, for example channeling is actually another it's one way um, a rather specific way of getting information and getting knowing it's channeling um, ideas or information from a different source some someone other than myself and the the hallmark of the ability to channel is really or or really to communicate with a another entity is love and acceptance it's is actually just like when you when you love a friend you can communicate and know them at a much deeper level than someone that you you know you don't care about or maybe you you even a little ticked off about so everywhere you look this love and acceptance is really the key to growing your ability to communicate whether it is to um, receive information and be able to receive information from your own mind from your own knowing or whether it is to communicate with another being it's the same thing because it's all one anyways there is no separation in oneness so when you really um, understand this 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 um, property of oneness you know that the more you love and accept yourself the more you allow yourself this learning curve the easier it is for you to be able to grow this ability and then the faster you can grow this ability and then last but not least I just want to mention that um, don't try too hard because if you try too hard it's 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 a form of attachment so if you give yourself maybe 15-20 minutes at a time to get information and if you don't seem to get too much information or no or even no information or wrong information then just just let go so this is so you've tried this so drop this exercise for a few hours and then when you feel drawn to do it again then do it again and or maybe you need to even wait a few days in order to visit the this this um this skill again so just um, don't try too hard just play with it the the emphasis is on play and the more you have no attachment and no um you know preconceived idea and you have no fear and no no judgment the more you love and allow this process and yourself to just allow the information to come to you 
the easier it is to know anything that you wish to know. And that is all I want to talk about in this um, episode of Knowing. <laughs>